Genesis chapter 31. And just for a review a little bit, and you remember in Genesis 30, uh, Jacob, after 20 years, has decided to go home. Uh, he has served for two wives for 14 years, Leah and Rachel. And then he worked for his father-in-law for six more years. And uh, so it's been 20 years, and he wants to take his wives and the children and all the things he's accumulated, livestock. And he reminded uh, Laban of the service he had done. And so in, back in Genesis chapter 25 and 26 that we finished up last Sunday, Jacob is respectful, but he's clear. Uh, and his time of service with Laban is now complete. He says, it's complete. I've done everything. And he'll say that again in a minute. And so Jacob gives Laban his plan of what he wants to do in, in chapter uh, 27 through 32. And so Jacob is, would keep the cattle and the goats and the sheep that were speckled and spotted and brown, if I can hope I got that clear. And uh, Jacob wasn't asking for a handout in chapter 30, but he wanted to take care of Laban's animals, and they reached an agreement. So Laban ag agreed to the plan in chapter 30, 33 through 35. Uh, but Laban began scheming. He, he liked to scheme. He, he liked to deceive. And so he's scheming again, and he worked... Uh, saying the day, or that day, it was a day of agreement to remove all the sheep and goats that were Jacob's, and he gave it to his sons, and they took those animals three, that should have been Jacob's and took them three days away to take care of them. So Jacob, when he left, he wouldn't know, but that doesn't work. We'll see in chapter 31. Uh, Jacob has a plan, and that plan is in chapter 31. 30, verse 37 through 43 that we looked at. He worked to influence the sheep and the goats to bear offspring that were ringed and spotted and speckled so they would be his. And he took the stronger animals and gave Laban the weaker animals. Uh, so he, Jacob, what I would call it, Jacob is doing selective breeding. Uh, the stronger animals are Jacob's and the weaker goes to Laban. So he's kind of paying back uh, paying Laban back for his uh, deceptive practices and deceptive things that he has always done uh, to Jacob. So now let's go to 31. Uh, in verse 31, let's read verse 1 through 3. Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's, and from that we belong to our, and from that what belonged to our father, and he's made all this wealth. Jacob saw the attitude of Laban, and behold, it was not friendly toward him as formerly. And then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. Every time God has told Jacob, I'll, I'll be with you. Is God with us today? Yeah, it's his children. We belong to him, and he's with us today. In verse 1, he said, Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's sons. He's listening. He can hear it. I don't know how he did, but he, he heard it. Laban's sons are accusing Jacob of taking away all their father's uh, flock, and that's not true. Uh, but that's what the sons think. The sons automatically going to take up there for their father. You know, that's the way it is. And, and so the Laban sons accused Jacob of doing that, taking away all that belonged to their father. And so Jacob had made Laban wealthy. He had made Laban wealthy from what he did. Uh, and Laban could see that he has benefited from Jacob. And he has also seen that Jacob, is, that God is with him, and he's, he's benefiting from all that. And so Jacob has been made wealthy, and all the sons who, who ever heard that we read was they're, they've taken Laban's version. 
The truth is Laban was only prospered because of the benefit of Jacob's blessings from God. And so somehow Laban's sons failed to see that. Uh, how long Jacob worked, he's worked for 20 years, but they can't see that for somehow. And it's hard for Jacob uh, to work for Laban for this long. Uh, they never saw, uh, his sons never saw J Laban's dishonesty. Listen, Laban was dishonest, or his jealousy, or his selfishness. And somehow they were never, never able to see all this. To them, they were, he was mistreating their father. Uh, more likely, they were listening to Laban. That's what the father does to the sons. Uh, so righteous sometimes mean suffer for evil, false accusations, evil speaking, and lies. And uh, most of the time, these things are, are done to just seek power, aren't they? When, when sometimes when people make false accusations or when they speak an evil of someone or they're speaking lies, it's for their own benefit that they're doing this. Uh, they're seeking power or gain. And the same is true here. The same is absolutely. You know, people haven't changed. And food may change and different types of food and mode of transportation but may change, but people are people and have been. Uh, I don't want to mess up this morning's lesson, but I, I'm going to take a part of it because I always think of this. What made Adam and Eve mad? Does that make us mad? Do you think that makes us? Yeah, that same thing made them mad makes us mad. Uh, the thing that makes them happy, you think it makes them happy? <laughs> We're the same. Well, yeah, the things that made them happy make us happy. What was sin for Adam and Eve is sin for us today. Uh, so Peter wrote to Christians that were suffering for righteous sake. And he encouraged them, and that's in First uh, Peter chapter two and verse twenty, First Peter chapter three, verse thirteen through seventeen, and First Peter chapter four, verse sixteen. So Peter wrote a lot about the suffering of Christians for being righteous, and, and so verse two, Jacob saw this attitude. He saw Laban's attitude. He saw Laban's face in verse two. Uh, Laban. Uh, He's, he could tell by his face, and he said, Behold, it was not friendly toward him like it was. Uh, and King James says, Countenance, the countenance of Laban in, in verse 2. So Laban's face was obviously different. We've, seen, we've all seen that, stuff like that. His attitude toward Jacob has now changed. Uh, accusations, deceit of Laban and his sons, and how Jacob... Uh, Jacob has to be on his toes. He, he's walking on eggshells, I always used to say. And so he had to be wary of him. So in verse 3, Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to your land and to your fathers and to your relatives, and I'll be with you. Uh, the Lord tells Jacob, It's time to go. You've been there long enough. You've worked for 20 years for him. And now Jacob will give that word of God to his family and start ma and they start making preparations. And then God tells him, I'll be with you. Uh, what a miraculous thing. What a wonderful, wonderful thing to be told. Uh, but we may not be told like Jacob was, but we're told right here in the word of God to us that, that he cares for us, that he loves us and that he'll take care of us. He'll make all things work together for good to those who what? Yeah, love the Lord. And so in verses 4 through 9, Jacob prepares the family to leave Laban, and they're going to do it secretly. And so let's look at verses 14, uh, 4 through 7. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to his flock in the field and said to them, I see your father's attitude. Now, he's talking to the daughters of Laban, and, you know, they love their father. They probably might not be able to see the things that, that Jacob sees, but I think they do. Uh, I see your father's attitude, that it is not friendly toward me as formerly, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength. 
yet your father has cheated me and, and changed my wages 10 times. However, God did not allow him to hurt me. He, I can see him telling his daughters that, can't you? He's trying to let them daughters know that we're fixing to leave and I want you to be part of my life from now on. And so he wants them to know why he's leaving, why he's leaving her father, and he sp they, their father. And he spoke thus, the speckle shall be your wages. And all the flock brought forth speckled and and if he spoke thus, the stripe shall be your wages, then all the flock brought forth uh, striped. Thus God has taken away your father's livestock and given them to me. And it came about at the time when the, I'm, I need to stop there, in Ber don't I? Because I only wanted to read to verse 7. And let's go back, verse 4. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah. He wants him, his wives, uh, who is their father is Laban, to know exactly why we're leaving. Uh, so he tells Rachel and Leah to meet him in the field, and it, they're, they're not told why. And, and then he's going to talk to them in the field. Maybe it's a good location. I don't know. Maybe it's a good location for them to talk. And uh, he'll tell them all about their father and what he has done dishonest and scheming and how many of you ladies would take up for your father you might do that today huh you might do that today and and so he's going to tell them the truth and in verse 5 I see your father's attitude he's against me he's no longer friendly he tells him I served your father the best of my ability with all my strength in verse 6 and then in verse 7, he says, Yet your father has cheated me. Uh, he told his wives that the father had done what they had done to him, and God had protected him so there would be no harm. And now the next verses, he's going to tell them the facts of the agreement and how good God had taken care of him. And it had to do with those animals. In verses 8 through 12, I'm not going to read them. We're just going to talk about it. In verse 8, he continues to tell Rachel and Leah what they agreed to with their father and how good God had been to him through this process. In verse 9, thus God has taken away your father's livestock and given them to me. In verse 10, Jacob tells them about a dream he had. And the dream was given to him by God. All the male goats were mating, uh, were striped and speckled and gray-spotted. And only Jacob, only Jacob's agreed to animals were born. And so in verse 11, he tells them, The angel of God said to me in a dream. In a dream, he sees that God's in charge of all of this. Of, of, of all those animals that are that are breeding, and the benefit has been to Jacob. Uh, he's seen. He says, "I I have seen all that Laban has been doing to you." The angel angel said that in verse twelve. The angel said, "We you know we have, when our eyes not closed. Does God see everything that's happening to us? Yeah, He does." He sees everything today. He knows what's happening to us when we pray and we, we pray for, for guidance and strength. And, uh, he knows what we're suffering. He knows what we're facing. But he wants to hear from us. And so the angel of God said, I've seen all that Laban had been doing to you. And so here he's assured that God sees all things and that God cares for his children like Jacob and he delivers us through his providence. Is, does God's providence work today? It, even picking out leaders of nations, God, God's in charge of this place. He's in charge of this world. He, uh, he sealed us. We belong to him. It's our... our it's our insurance that we belong to him. And, and so the same thing for what's going on. He makes nations. He, he makes leaders and he takes them away. So he's in charge even today when we might not see it. Uh, we're assured that God sees all things and God cares for his children like Jacob here. 
and he delivers uh, he delivers us through his providence. God has blessed Jacob in spite of all the things Laban has tried to do to him. It, it didn't matter because God's going to make sure that everything works out for good for Laban. I mean, for Jacob, because God has a plan, isn't it? God has a plan. He's going to bring Jesus Christ into the world through that family line. And so in verse 13, he says, I am the God of Bethel. What happened at Bethel to Jacob? He was leaving home and he stopped and he got there and he, he took a rock and slept on it for a pillow. Oh boy, that'd be a rough pillow, wouldn't it? And then he had this dream that staircase going to heaven and uh, the Lord standing up at top of it and angels were descending and descending. And so he named the place Bethel. Uh, Bethel meant house of God. And so Beth, Bethel, uh, Jacob knew this was a special place and it will be from now on uh, through the history. It'll be a special place. Did you go to Bethel? We just went by it. Just went by? Uh, it, it's it's going to be that same special place forever. And so he said, I am, I am the God of Bethel, he's telling uh, Jacob, where you anointed a pillar. He took that stone and made a pillar uh, where you made a vow to me. And Jacob said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you 10% of everything I got if you'll just be with me. And he does that the rest of his life. And so he says, uh, now arise, leave this land, and return to the land of your birth. Here we go. And our Lord identified himself to Jacob as the God of Bethel. I love that. After he left home, he was a threat to Esau, you remember? And so he did all those things. He, he, he stayed the night at Bethel. Wasn't called Bethel at the time, but it was about 12 miles from Jerusalem. And uh, then the stone, remember, I'm, I'm backing up again. I don't, let's go on. Uh, verse 14 through 16. In verse 14, Leah and Rachel, they're ready to go. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess they see too. You're going to see what they do to their father, what Leah does, especially here in a minute. And Leah and Rachel are ready to go. Verse 14. Do we still have any portion or inheritance in our father's house? Have, have, is anything left that belongs to us? Or is he taking it all and spending it all? They don't know. They're asking. And so when Rachel and Leah learned of Laban's trickery and his deceit and the message he, that Jacob received from God, the wives are mad. They're angry with Laban. They're ready to leave. But now they're wondering... What about our inheritance before we leave? <laughs> uh, well, God's going to bless them so much that they won't even think about that later. Verse 15, are we not reckoned by him as foreigners? Is, are we being treated like foreigners? The wives say, after Rachel and Leah married Jacob and they were treated by Laban as if he owned them and he sold them to Jacob, and they had to work for him for 16 years, Jacob did, or 14 years. And so this money Laban spent on himself, apparently, that, but they felt that way anyway. And so they also feel like they're being counted as strangers. Uh, they, uh, that, that Laban is attempting to profit from their labors, from their hard work. So verse 16, Surely all the wealth which God has taken away from our Father belongs to who? To us. Those who us. And our children. Now then, do whatever God has said to you. You know, I think about that. I guess when Beverly and I pass on, our kids won't have nothing but furniture and, <laughs> and, and, and trinkets and most of the stuff they'll give away some they'll sell uh, but not here <laughs> they got a lot of stuff <laughs> and I think of that sometime and I think you know we build our hopes on stuff and things and 
And then when we die, it's all given away. The kids get it and they sell it and give it away and it doesn't mean nothing to them. And some things do, of course. And so we can easily see how the wise feel here. They see Laban's dirty dealings and they feel like uh, his love is, is nothing for them. It's all for stuff and things. Uh, that's how they feel. And they're ready to go to the land of Canaan. So Jacob gathers his family together along with the animals and the household, and he's going to slip away secretly. He's not going to tell Laban he's leaving, but he's leaving. He's taking all that stuff with him, and Laban finds out and, and finally takes off after him. We'll see that. And he wants space and time between them because it's going to take Jacob and his family a long time to travel because they got all these flocks and herds and, and they wanted to put uh, space in between them before Laban found out that they were gone. In verse 17 and 18, then Jacob arose and put his children and his wives on the camels. Can't you picture that? I can in my mind. I got that boy right there. And he drove away all his livestock and all his property which he had gathered and his acquired livestock which he had gathered and paid down Aram. That's, that's about, I forget how many days away, three days away, I think. That's where Laban's sons, uh, Laban told his sons to take those animals that belonged to Jacob, really, and take them to pay down Aram, which is about three days away. He thinks they're safe there, but they're not. Jacob knows, and he goes and gets them to go to the land of Canaan, he says, to his father Isaac. Now, Rachel and Leah are in agreement. Jacob has everything packed up while Laban has gone uh, to shear the sheep. In verse 19, Laban has gone to shear the sheep, and Rachel stole his father's household idol, or idols. And now, we're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. He, so she wants those idols. If I can't take anything, if he's got it all, I'm going to get his idols. I, I don't know what they're made out of. It may be valuable. And so in verse 20 and 21, and Jacob deceived Laban. This is the first time he's deceived him, and Laban has always been deceiving. Jacob deceived Laban, the Arminian, by not telling him he was fleeing. So he fled with all he had. And he arose and crossed the Euphrates River and set his face toward the hill country of Gilead. That's verse 20 and 21. So Jacob slipped away quietly. And Laban is gone to the location where he's going to shear the sheep. And Rachel stole Laban's household images. And Jacob had no idea she did this. Jacob doesn't know she did this. But, so he's innocent in this thing, and, and we'll see that when, they, when Laban catches up with him. And we wonder, why did, La why did Rachel do this? Why did she do this? What do y'all think? Why did Rachel do this? What does she want with idols? She knows that's not right. Spite? <laughs> Out of spite. That's, yeah, that's probably one reason. What, anybody else? I think that's probably it. And, and uh, I think it was just pure spite uh, because her inheritance is out the window, she sees. That's what she thinks. And so uh, she takes these false gods that were part of the family treasure. They mean a lot to Laban. We'll see that in a minute. Uh, Maybe they're taking them constituted uh, a legal basis for inheritance claims. You know what I mean? I, I don't know, but I think it's spite myself. Or possibly maybe because the value of them or the beauty of them or, the po or maybe this possibility that has sentimental value to them. I, I don't know other possible reasons that she did this, but we don't know why. All we know is she took them without Laban knowledge or permission. In fact, Jacob had no idea e either. Uh, and I don't have time to keep going because they, uh, hopefully we'll have a packed house in about two minutes. Uh, uh, Liz 